Hi everybody out there in internet world, this is Keith Tanner here from Fly Miata and today we're going to talk about cooling because it's 100 degrees outside and there is a 60,000 acre fire on the edge of the valley and it just seems like a good day for things to be cooler than they really are. So today we're going to talk about our new cross flow radiator. And I've got a lot of good information about this, a lot of really interesting stuff and don't forget to ask questions in the comments if there's things you want to know because we have a long history with this radiator so it's going to be an interesting conversation. Um, but first, before I get to the radiator, um, Fly Miata has a new website. You may have noticed if you've been to Fly Miata in the last 36 hours or so, you might have noticed things are a little different. The new site runs faster, it is more secure, it has a separate section for each generation so you're not stuck looking at parts for NAs when you have an ND or an NC when you have an MV, etc, etc. Um, and we have a bunch of new capabilities that we're going to be rolling out. Now, like any complicated piece of machinery, it needs a, a bit of sorting out. Um, we did a lot of testing before we launched it, but things are still popping up. Um, please be patient with us on that one. We are putting out fires as quickly as we can, um, but overall it will be a much improved experience for you, I think. And we've got a bunch of new stuff planned for the site that will actually make it much easier for you to get the right parts for your car. Right down to the point of being able to put in what year your car is, and it will tell you if the parts in your shopping cart are appropriate or not. That's one of the future plans. So you don't accidentally order a uh, trailer hitch for an NC and try to put it on your NV, which is, has happened. Okay, but today we're going to talk about cross floor radiators. Um, we first started testing really seriously radiator testing over ten, about 10 years ago. Um, we locked Brandon in a room with our dyno. Uh, we took an entire drivetrain and just mounted it to a mounted it to a frame with some little roller wheels on it so we could push it around and it was nothing but an engine or transmission or rear end. And we hooked it up to our dyno and the sort of dyno we were running at the time, our rototest, you could run at high load for as long as you wanted to. It had, uh, what was it, 80 horsepower worth of cooling fans on it, four enormous radiators to cool down the fluid. It was fantastic because you could just load a car up and run it and run it and run it. So it was great for testing cooling. So we locked Brandon in the dyno room with this contraption and he had a little hand throttle and he sat there and he would hold an engine at a certain load for a certain amount of time and we'd, we'd measure how long it took to get up to temperature, what the deltas were, and then we'd swap out the radiator and do the same, all in the interest of testing efficiency of radiators. Not just, not just size, not just all of the, you know, the stuff that you see on the easy radiator upgrades, but you know, what really works. And we found some interesting stuff. Um, this, is going, this was on the old website, it will be on the new website shortly, um, but it's not there right now. But we do actually have, um, we will, we, I will publish this. Look at Brandon, look at all the hair on Brandon. This was a long time ago. I think that's before he got married, um, <laughs> coincidentally. So, uh, so we actually have the, act the, the results that we found in this. We tested a stock radiator, we tested stock Mazda Speed radiator, um, we tested, we'll call it a Brand X, sort of a normal aluminum race radiator. Uh, we tested a couple of different cross flow designs. We, I think we had a triple pass in there and we had a dual pass. We had one that was both this thick, uh, tested all sorts of stuff. And what we found was radiator core thickness is not as critical as you think it is. Um, the heat transfer drops off as the, as the cores get thicker. You know, twice as, core does not, twice as thick does not mean you transfer twice as much heat. It does mean you've got a lot more resistance to the air going through um, and heavier and bulkier and everything. Uh, we found what was important was things like fin density um, and core design and so a small, a thin radiator with a fairly low fin density, if I remember correctly, um, is the way to go. I think it's the low fin density. The one we used. <laughs> Brandon knows this stuff. Um, so we even found out that the stock radiator was better than the generic aluminum race radiator in a, lot of, uh, in a lot of situations, especially on Mazda Speeds. Mazda Speeds have a better than average radiator. You may not have known that. Uh, we didn't actually know that very well at the time either, but we know now. Um, and the testing, you, you will see this on the site, the testing ranged over, you know, ambient temperatures changed, uh, but we looked at the delta over ambient temperature. And our cross flow, fundamentally this design, was about 10 degrees Celsius uh, more efficient, meaning it had a 10 degree, it, it ran 10 degrees cooler relative to ambient than the stock radiator did. And that's pretty, that's pretty dramatic. Um, it actually ran cooler, even though it was 7 degrees Celsius hotter in the room, which is 15, excuse me, high fin, <laughs> that was Brandon, our engineer who's watching this, and the high fin density was the clue. Thank you, Brandon. I have my little angels watching over me here. Um, 
Anyhow, we found that even though it was considerably hotter in the room when we were doing the cross flow testing, the cross flow was running at a colder temperature than the stock radiator in a cooler room. Does that make sense? So basically, the cross flow was far, far more efficient and was able to, it allowed us to focus in our radiator design selection, our radiator design criteria. And we were the first ones to really bring cross flow to the market. Um, there was a, a well known race team took one of our cross flow radiators and happened to win the Thunder Hill 25 hours with one. Uh, they're very well proven. Um, we were the first ones, I believe, to, uh, to come up with this mounting design that can work in an NA or an NB, um, which allows us to keep down, you know, keeps volume up, which means we can bring the price down. And uh, it's proven itself to be a very, very efficient, very, very effective radiator. Uh, so much so that there have been others come on the market that have been very similar. And, uh, well, recently we decided to rework our radiator to address some of the things that we've learned by selling these things for nine years or so. Um, Crossflow radiators are very clearly the performance option. They are the most efficient option. Mazda has gone to crossflow radiators since the uh, NB went away. Um, but we found that they, they have certain characteristics that are make, can make them a little difficult to live with. Um, one of them is the filler. If you've ever tried to fill one of the existing crossflows, uh, one of our old ones or some of the others on the market with the, uh, with the thermostat, uh, the radiator neck is cantilevered out on the end here. Um, it takes forever to fill up. I don't have one to show you here, but it just takes a long time to get all the air out of the system. It's quite awkward. This one, we were able to get the, uh, the filler neck right on the end of the tank. So, boom, you cannot fill any faster than this. This is a very, very quick fill job. Um, we also, and this is related to some of our fan kit upgrades that we've talked about in the past, we have, this has just got a plug in it right now, we have a um, fitting in here for a coolant temperature sensor. Or if you want to, you can put a pressure sensor in there. Some people actually watch coolant pressures instead of coolant temperatures to monitor the health of the cooling system. Um, this, uh, I will show you some of the side effects of this little, little crit over here. Uh, we also have partnered with Coyo for manufacturing. Now don't get this confused with the Coyo radiator, the generic one you can buy everywhere. Um, Coyo has been making radiators for, I think it's close to a century. I have this written down here. Um, over half a century. So, well, that's close to a century. Um, they have been making them for a long time. They make very good quality radiators. We don't agree with some of their design choices on their generic radiator, but we do agree that they make a beautifully TIG welded um, radiator that uh, uses no clock brazing for maximum durability and anti corrosion protection. So, there you go. No clock brazing. I can't really get into the technology of that, but basically, it's a very high quality radiator. and because we had it made by Coyo, we were able to bring the price down from our previous generations that they were beautifully made, but unfortunately were expensive. Um, so again, do not confuse this with a generic, you know, a Coyo radiator you can buy from Summit Racing or, or eBay or Amazon or whatever. Um, this is very specifically a Fly Miata only radiator, but it's made by some of the best in the business. Travis, it appears we have a question. Uh, someone specifically wants to know how it compares and what the differences are. Okay, specifically, how does it compare to a generic Brand X radiator, and what are the differences? The other coil. The other coil. The other coil is representative of most race radiators. There's a bunch of ones on the market um, that look very much the same, that are very much the same. The biggest difference is this is a cross flow. And what a cross flow means is it means that a normal Miata radiator, which I do not have here, has its tanks at the top and the bottom. And specifically, I'm talking about the NA and the NB here right now. Um, so the coolant goes in the top and it runs down through the radiator and comes out the bottom and back into the engine. It's a shorter, you have a, so you have a shorter run of tubes. All the tubes are going vertically. Um, so you get a shorter run of those tubes and uh, the, the coolant spends less time in it. So what a cross flow is, is the water goes in on this side and then it runs across this way and out the bottom through here. So it's a cross flow. The water is running across the radiator. You'll notice that every you know, turbocharger intercooler, for example, looks like this. And it means that the water spends a little bit longer in the tubes and has a little longer, a little more time to get rid of that heat. And uh, that's, that is the fundamental difference. This is a cross flow radiator. The radiator goes from one side to the other. And the standard coil radiator and most generic um, radiators, including the stock ones, are vertical. And we often call them upright radiators. But they're a downflow, if you want to call it. Anyhow, that is the big, big difference. And that is an enormous difference in efficiency. It's also a very narrow core. It's 34 millimeters, I think. 
Um, it's about the same as stock, or pretty similar to stock, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it feels like 34. Um, a lot of aftermarket race radiators will simply stack cores on top of each other, which looks impressive. You see a radiator this thick, but the problem is, is that your rate of heat transfer drops off dramatically as the air moves through there, and basically your efficiency starts falling in the toilet. Uh, and then you get into packaging problems, you have trouble pulling the air through there. There's a bunch of, basically in our testing, the big fat radiators did not perform. Um, so they look impressive, they're really easy to design because you just keep stacking cores on it until you run out of space. But really the way to do it is a single, very efficient core design. And that's one of the reasons we went with Coil is because of that efficient core design and we were able to get them to bake it nice and thin the way we wanted to. Now there's another variation on this which is an interesting one. You can do what's called a dual pass or a triple pass. And that the dual pass is where, say you block this off, the water comes in here, runs across, comes down this way, and comes back out over there. But there's a problem, and it means the outlet's on this side. The outlet and the inlet are on the same side in a dual pass. We use that on our V8 cars, because that's the way packaging works. To run a, dual, a true dual pass on a NA or MB Miata means you've got to move either the inlet or the outlet to the other side of the car. Awkward packaging difficulties. You can also do a triple pass, which forces it to go this way, then this way, then this way. And in our testing, very, very slightly better, considerably more expensive, um, but not enough different to make, to justify, basically. Um, so this was the, uh, and you can get into the quality problems if you have leaks in those little dividers. We have come across that in the past and some of our other applications. So, so we decided this was the best combination of efficiency, very efficient, um, ease of installation, and effectiveness. Effectiveness, efficiency, same thing. So, let's have a look at this. On the, oh, one other thing we do with these is we monitor the, the placement of these spuds for the radiator for the uh, fans are very tightly constrained. Uh, most aftermarket radiators tend to be a little sloppy with this. Uh, we have we make sure that they are very precisely placed because that makes it easier to run our fan kits. Um, makes it easier to do a proper bolt-on aluminum shield that keeps it from moving around. Um, gets it in just the right place. So we have a question there, Travis. Great transition. Somebody asked, will all of our fan kits work with this radiator? The question is, will all of our fan kits work with this radiator? Thank you for asking that question. The answer is yes. Uh, we have fan kits. You may notice if you look at our airflow kits that we offer specific cross-flow fan kits. And that's because the shroud is designed to clear. This gets moved over a little bit, this inlet. So it's designed specifically to clear this inlet. Having this inlet on the end tank also improves access for a coolant reroute. Uh, makes it much easier. It's a straight shot for the uh, the inlet hose instead of having to come and go around a bunch of tight little corners. So packaging is improved. But yes, all of our fan kits that are built for cross flows will fit a cross flow. Fan kits that are identified as being for upright radiators will not fit cross flow. You'll need a different shroud for that. Yes, Travis. One more quick question. Do we use this radiator in our V8 cars? Do we use this radiator in our V8 cars? And the answer is not exactly. Um, the reason being is that the V8 cars have the inlet, uh, they, they require, because of the packaging of the engine, they require the inlet and outlet to be on the same side, just to, because that's the way that GM designed the engine. Um, so it's actually a dual pass, and they also have different size inlet and outlet on it. So fundamentally, yes, it is the same thing we use in the V8 cars. So we use these to cool, you know, 480, I've got a 466 rear wheel horsepower V8. I had to move out of the way to park this here today. Um, and it has no problem staying cool with a radiator that's very, very closely related to this, but there are some design changes that are required by the fact that it's a different application. So, so sort of, yeah. The V8 ones are made by Griffin, actually, instead of Coyo. Um, Griffin is a little better suited to small run stuff, um, to being able to make, you know, just a few radiators like the V8. It's obviously not the same volume as these. Uh, Coyo has the ability to make a lot of them at a lower price point, so that allows us to bring the price down for everyone. Travis, we have a question. One more fan question. Will the stock fans fit on our crossflow? The stock fans will fit on the crossflow. You will have to do a little bit of trimming uh, to the edge of the shroud. I don't have a set of stock fans here, but the stock fans expect the inlet to be about here, uh, and obviously it is over here, so you are going to have to do this. It will work. So that's a good question. Let's have a look and see what it looks like in the car. And here's where we see something that's a little bit different and is unique to this radiator. Now, if you have an NA, you don't recognize this mounting setup because this is an NB mounting setup, being this is an NB. Um, but NB radiators, they just have this little clip that goes over top and holds the radiator down. And we have to change that because we have, first off, um, the big thing is we have the cap on this side. 
this is the design choice we had to make or the trade-off we had to make in order to have that cap in a place where you can fill it quickly and easily um, is that now the cap is inside the bracket so if you are getting one of these for an NB you will need this bracket uh, this bracket set um, they are available of course obviously at the same time you, you buy the radiator we don't include them with the radiator because that would jack the price up for the NA guys so it's determined by the chassis if you have an NB you will need this kit but trust me, if you have ever waited for one of the old style cross flows, the other cross flows to burble its way up and then you run it for a little bit and you bounce it and you squeeze up a radiator hose and you do it again and again, um, you, will much you will very much appreciate this significantly improved um, filling technique. Uh, he does say that it drains much faster with the drain here because it is a bigger bore than we were able to get in this uh, in that V8 style one on the bottom. So there you go. There is the plus for having the drain on the back side is it drains faster. So it fills faster, drains faster, basically easier to service. Um, and also the price point is down considerably. When we first brought these to market back in 2011 or 12, whatever it was, I think they were about $600 plus shipping. That was in the days when nothing shipped for free. Uh, now, today... Uh, this kit is $349, including free shipping inside the U.S., so it's a considerable price drop compared to uh, what we had had in the past. It's more efficient than it, or more easy to live with, more effective than it was uh, than it has been. Um, so you've got an improved product, you've got a considerably lower price point, and you've got free shipping. I mean, what's not to love? NB owners, of course, will unfortunately have to buy these upper these upper clamps, and we also have these little guys which are necessary and this goes back to your stock fan question that we had earlier if you are running stock fans on one of these the stock fan on an nb on one side has little little nubs like this on the bottom so we sell a pair of brackets that will allow you to modify that to to suit that's only if you're using either a non-fm fan kit well if you're using a non-fm fan kit you'll need these if you're using a fly me out of fan kit one of our airflows or the shrouds you won't need these little guys but if you are trying to use stock nb fans Unfortunately, there's a little bit of extra there. And again, they're not included with the radiator because that would bring the price up for everybody. So we decided to only, only offer as an option to those who really needed it and not make everyone else pay for it. Do we have any more questions, Travis? Someone is asking the specific differences in efficiency between the crossflow and the Mazda speed that you were talking about earlier. Specific differences in efficiency. I don't know if I can say that it is 37% more efficient. Um, I don't have quite that level of detail. Uh, we do know that it was able to... I don't know if I have the Mazda Speed on this chart. I don't. I think it's because it made some of the Brand X stuff, the, the generic aluminum radiator, look a little... look bad, so we didn't include it in there. Uh, it was more efficient than the generic um, non-crossflow radiator, but it was considerably less efficient than our... Uh, than our cross flow. Exactly where it sits in between those two, I honestly, I don't have that information anymore and it's been nearly 10 years, so I'm sorry I don't have that for you. Um, the, the Mazda Speed Radiator is a good piece for sure. The biggest problem is that the newest of them is 15 years old by this point and uh, is made out of plastic. So as you may or may not know, as that pl those plastic end tanks age, they get brittle. And uh, of course they're subject to pressure and temperature variations all the time. And eventually they will crack if you're lucky, they will just leak a little bit. If you're unlucky, they will blow the top right off and dump all of your coolant at once. If you're on the track, you will spin out on that coolant and smash into the wall. Um, I believe that happened to a Formula One driver this past weekend. I think he spun some coolant. Um, I could be I could be wrong about that. It might have been a spec me out of for all I know. Uh, but um, but those you know, if you are looking at using a stock Mazda Speed radiator, you would want to make sure that yes, it is an actual Mazda produced stock Mazda Speed Radiator. I don't even know if they're still available new anymore. And if they are available new, they're probably still 15 years old by this point. So that's more of a theoretical thing by this point. Um, I would not want to subject a stock Mazda NA or MB radiator to the rigors of track use, um, especially if I was looking to maximize my cooling capability at this way to try to save money. So this is more efficient than the Mazda Speed. Um, and it is not going to explode its end tanks um, because it's 15 years old. And even when it is 15 years old, aluminum end tanks. So that problem has been bypassed. Any more questions over there, Travis? No? So let's see. Ease of installation. Installation is very easy. Um, you know, radiators were designed to be installed and, uh, and removed fairly simply in the car. So it is no different than installing a normal radiator. 
Um, if you do have, if you're running a, a reroute, you'll actually find it easier to get this, uh, this upper radiator hose lined up. If you do not run a reroute, you will need a different upper radiator hose or have to modify your existing upper radiator hose to make it fit. And we have an off-the-shelf unit that you can buy and just simply bolt in. Travis, let's go over here and have a look. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This kit is running the Fly Miata, or this car is running the Fly Miata reroute, of course. And so you can see this hose comes straight from the back of the engine, and it's a straight shot into this upper, uh, this upper point. And so the, uh, the hose has to make an awkward S-bend, same if it's coming from the factory radiator location. It's got to make this crazy uh, S-bend around. Um, the radiator hose that we sell does a nice clean um, bend into there, or if you're running a reroute, it's a nice straight shot to the back. So it's actually easier installation in that case, um, but you will need, of course, the appropriate upper radiator hose to match whatever radiator you're using. And that's true of all crossflows. Um, the nature of the crossflow is you just need to move that upper, ho that upper hose across. So to recap, very efficient, as proven by race winds, as proven by... Um, actual documented dyno testing, and I will link that, uh, that dyno testing right up in the write-up for this, for this thing in our store. Uh, lower price than ever, $349 shipped, um, plus any accessories you may need if you are an NB owner for your little caps. Uh, made for us by Koyo Radiator to our own design, exclusive to Fly Miata, but with their manufacturing capabilities, and it's not outsourced to one of those subsidiaries or, or some some little sweatshop, it actually is made by Koyo. Um, I forget exactly where they are, but not in the US, unfortunately, but that's the, that's the nature of uh, trying to bring the price down sometimes on aluminum products. So not the same as the generic Koyo radiator you can buy elsewhere, um, but made to the same quality level as, uh, as what they offer, just with a much, much more efficient design. Any last minute questions before we move on, Travis? Okay, well, I think that's about it. That's about all I've got to say about this radiator. Um, they are in stock right now. We just took delivery of 35 of them or something like that, a big bunch of them. Um, and it's hot outside, so it's a perfect time to upgrade your cooling system. Uh, and, of course, it comes with accessories, too. I'd... And a structure. There you go. There's your accessories. Um, if you have any more questions about this product, please do put them in the comments. We will answer them in the comments. Um, of course, have a look at the Fly Miata website. We'll have more pictures of this thing. If you haven't seen enough of me waving it around, I'll have a link to the actual instrumented testing that led to the development of this actual radiator. And that's what I got. Next week, we'll be back with some more, uh, some more how-to stuff. I'm probably going to talk about how to corner weight a car based on some of the questions we had on our suspension um, discussions a few weeks ago. Uh, so we'll get back to giving you some actual information you can use to work on your own car at home. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, if you have suggestions for future, pro future uh, conversations, future subjects for us, throw them in the comment. We'd love to, uh, love to answer them. Travis, do we have a question? You're looking That's twitchy over there, Travis. Traffic. <laughs> uh, one asking brushless fans, good or bad, which we have a video on that. Yeah, I'm just, uh, people can't hear you because I have a microphone. Um, so one of the questions we have is whether brushless fans are good or bad. Obviously, we're big believers in brushless fans. Um, and I did a whole video on brushless fans it's on our YouTube channel. It's on our Facebook, uh, our Facebook page right now. Um, short version is yes, brushless fans are great. This car is equipped with them. It's quite effective. What else do we have, Travis? Can we ship to Denmark? Can we ship to Denmark? We certainly can, actually. We can definitely ship to Denmark. I will warn you that with the current situation, um, international shipping is slower than usual. Uh, we are happy to ship overseas, but with the drop in air travel, as everyone's staying home, um, there has been a considerable drop in the amount of international shipping capacity. So while we're happy to ship to Denmark, uh, it may take a little longer to get there than usual. So my apologies, not much we can do about that, but that's just the way it is today in the world. Yes, Travis. Interesting one. Um, should we possibly be considering an aluminum radiator with an integrated oil cooler for the NB? An aluminum, are we considering an aluminum, this is a very specific question. Are we considering an aluminum radiator with an integrated co oil cooler for the ND? And the answer is no, we are not. Um, the ND radiator is actually a, another interesting conversation. It is a, uh, it is a cross flow from the factory. And the first one we offered for it was a triple pass because that's what our manufacturer, our radiator partner had. They said, hey, we've got this. It's great. So we said, oh, awesome. We stuck one in a car. And we also ended up with one that was a single pass like this. It was a normal cross flow. And we discovered when we were running them back to back at the track that the ones with the straight crossover the, without the triple pass was actually running cooler. 
And we did a bunch of testing and found out the triple pass was not what we had hoped it would be. Uh, to the point where we actually replaced all the ones we'd sold. We got our manufacturer to make us a bunch of straight across, um, straight through ones like this, a uh, single pass. And we brought back all of our triple pass. I think we actually asked our customers to destroy them and send us fun evidence. But uh, we replaced them all because we were a little embarrassed about the fact that that, that got through. So the ND can use pretty much all the radiator it's got. Um, it's a better way to cool the ND is to add a supplementary oil cooler with a separate heat exchanger. Um, that's exactly what we've done, of course. Uh, we've done another video recently about our, uh, our ND fluid cooling options, um, lubrication cooling. Um, but yeah, I, we are not planning on, at the moment, as far as I know, we are not planning on building an oil cooler into a radiator because unfortunately you need to give up radiator core space to do it. And most Miatas do not have the extra radiator core space to allow that to happen efficiently. We've played around with it in the, over in the years, over the past. Years ago, we even had one with the oil cooler only went up to here. And then we ran an intercooler pipe through the radiator um, for the FM4 turbo kit that was very creative in some ways. Um, but unfortunately, it was not as efficient as running a separate oil cooler. So we've, we've moved away from that. Many more questions, Travis. OK. Well, thanks for your attention, folks. Uh, we will be back next week again. Hit the questions in the comments. We'll answer them. Um, and uh, in the meantime, get your radiators while it's hot. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll talk to you next week.